there she is, Sandy. The great city of Verdine. Yeah. Right where they said she'd be. It looks peaceful enough. Yeah. Like the crust on a gooseberry pie. All the pains and aches are underneath. Yeah, we've got to cut into that pie stand and see how she tastes. I know already. You know, there's a lot of peculiar things going on in Washington. Man ain't crazy. And he ain't sending two of his best United States Marshals out here to eat cake, either. Right you are, son. Well, Sandy, how's your appetite for gooseberry pie? Oh, I think it'll set with me all right. We better split going into town, kind of be strangers for a spell. Same old system, huh? Same old system. <laughs> all right, lead off, Sandy. Check. Mr. Davis got all the money in his cage and mine too. This is the third time my bank has been robbed this year. Hey, that fellow shot one of the bandits. I saw him do it. Anybody know this man? No. He cut down on the sheriff just before this man got him. Well, I was just coming into town and I seen the pistol ruckus going on. So I pointed in his general direction and pulled the trigger. He was sure unlucky, wasn't he? Because I generally miss. Well, I don't care how it happened. You did a good job. Uh, my name is Bradford. I'm the banker. Candy. Candy Hopkins. I'm sort of a... Uh... bootmaker and cobbler and so forth. Now, now, now we're settled here. Right, now you right, right. call on me for anything you need, Hopkins. Thank Mr. You. Bradford, what do you think we'd better do with this man? We'll take him over to the sheriff's office and see if anyone will recognize him. My name's Pop Haynes. Glad to know you, Pop. You're coming along makes it double good. Yeah, how's that? We need a bootmaker. Well, this town don't look hardly big enough to support two. All that. I used to be. That old man Laswell's been dead more than six months now. You tell. Well, you know, I might bring my stuff along, look around, and then open up after a while. Well, well, all these things in there. No. Yeah. Here. Come on. I'll show well, you. Wait, uh, well, wait. No, no. Come on along. Well, here we are. What did I tell you? Everything's here. Kind of messy, ain't it? Well, yes, a little. See, folks had to fix their own boots. Yeah? By the way, what old man last will die of? Well, some might tell you that he died when he fixed old Cactus Pete's boots so tight to paint. Some might tell me that, huh? Mm. Don't pay no mind to it, though. Just gossip. Just gossip? Just gossip. Yeah? But he was shot, wasn't he? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He was shot, all right. Well, tell me, who was the fellow that shot him? Well, he was a perfect... <laughs> What's the matter? Hey, your foot, your foot, man. Look, where? Well, Didn't you very hard? No, no, don't just nip me, little. <laughs> just kind of surprise me. You're full of jokes, ain't you? Well, after a fashion. 
Well, I got to be going. I'll see you later. Well, what luck did you have? Pretty good. I trailed the boys up to their hideout to the place called Bear Paw Draw. I wrote in to tell you if you miss me for a few days, that's where I'll be. Uh-huh. No, I think I'll go along with you. Oh, you better stay here and keep an eye on the town. Well, you know, I'm practically a businessman there now. I up and shot one of them bank robbers. Darn if they didn't give me a present first. Hey, that might make it easier for us. You know, robbing that bank three times in a row might be just an accident. But uh, holding up that stagecoach every time it had a chip and a gold on it, that's no accident. Well, that's just what I say. I think that gang's got a foreman around it. Well, if I find out anything, I'll let you know. Well, all right. Nevada, did you ever pick your own boots? <laughs> no, sir. I'll leave that for an expert. And it's got to be fixed just right or I get popping mad. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, I guess everybody feels just about the same. Yes, I guess so. You know, I think I'll come up there with you where it's uh, quiet and peaceful like. That is, if it gets too dangerous for me in town. Dangerous? What the Sam Hill are you talking about? Well, you know, it oh, got it if they didn't give me a whole boot shop. What do you know about fixing boots? Not a darn thing. And that's what I'm scared about. Well, you better kind of take it easy, like. All right. <laughs> Sign a red? I guess not. If he was coming, he'd be here by now. Somebody might have followed this year. Yeah, and he also figured if they do, they won't get past two rifles. Yeah, that coffee ought to be ready for now. Smells like good coffee, too. Howdy. Don't ever make a move like that unless you can do it faster. Might get yourself killed. That's better. Don't well, we forget about the fireworks. We're going to talk this over peaceful life. Help yourself. This is not a bad setup. Who's your boss? He ain't here. And you'd better hit the trail before he is. Oh, I guess I'll wait. That's your funeral. Where'd you come from? 
That ain't important. The main thing is I'm here. Well, I'm warning you, you'd better hit the trail. Save your breath. I think I'm going to like it here. You've taken things mighty high-handed, ain't you? That's right. I happened to be in town when you boys dropped in on the bank, and I trailed you here. It's a good thing I'm not a partridge. You don't swing. That's from the cabin. I don't like to kill off men I aim to work with. But the next time you try to draw on me, you're going to get one dead center. Move down where I can keep an eye on you. Move! What's going on here? Put your rifles on the table. You won't need them. This Waddy stuck us up and said he's joining. Where'd you get that idea? You boys beat him to that bank today by five minutes. You lost one of your men, so I figured to take his place and his share. Well, maybe I got something to say about that. Maybe, but I don't think so. There's enough of us to down him, boss. Say the word. Go ahead and make your play. But this outfit is going to lose a couple of men. I'll start even with you. Look out, boss. He's plenty fast. I like men that don't scare easy. We'll forget the gunplay. What do you answer to, mister? Nevada will do. Jake, you're in. This is Nickel Plate, Killifer, Wilson, and Hardy. Howdy. Hey, how'd you get by us? We was watching that trail. Yes, I know. I saw you. Come in. $6,247 and a few cents, Mr. Bradford. Well, that's quite a loss, Miller. But I suppose it could have been worse. People have been asking me if we're going to close our doors. Well, it's happened to us before, and we're still open, aren't we? But you can't keep shouldering those losses. I've got to. What about those loans on cattle, the mortgages we hold? Some of those people need extension very badly. I know, and I'll carry them as long as our credit lasts. And then, of course, we have to look after ourselves and those eastern banks. Yes, sir. And eastern banks are unsympathetic, Miller. Very unsympathetic. I think I understand, Mr. Bradford. Mr. Slade's coming in to see you, sir. All right. Hi, Mr. Slade. Hello, oh, Miller. I saw the holdup from my office in the saloon. Besides getting one of our men killed by a shoemaker, how'd we come out? A little better than $6,000. Hmm. That's just what you figured it would be. Too bad half has got to come back into the bank. And what about that gold dust shipment in the vaults? Do we give half of that back, too, after we get it? No, sir, we're going to keep that. And all of today's haul, too, there's going to be no more personal loans from those fictitious eastern banks. And no more fancy extensions on mortgages and cattle. You're right. I've got this town just where I want it. I'm going to own every head of stock, parcel of land, and mining property within a hundred miles. Now, uh, don't cover too much ground there, Bradford. Part of it's mine, you know. Well, of course it is, Slade. I'll take care of you. You know that. Mm. Sure, but I like to talk about it, too, once in a while. What about that gold dust shipment? Still go out tomorrow night? The stage leaves tomorrow night, and the gold will be on it. Now, I'd better get up to Bear Paw Draw and tell the boys. All right, do that. Everybody in town's been in here. Well, Slim brought you a pair of boots here. Show them to him, Slim. Yeah, if Bobcat caught them off his, I'd kick him out of the smokehouse. Can you fix them for me? Well, yeah. you know, that'll take quite a job. No, no hurry. Tomorrow night will be all right. Yeah? Uh, all right. You drop in on your way home. Uh, see what I can do. Uh, you see any? Hey, uh, this boot pinches. Whereabouts the boot stretches? Hello. Hello, fellas. 
Are you the new bootmaker? Yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 Phyllis, this is Sam. Uh, could you get these in time for the dance tomorrow night? Well, the boy isn't a very good dancer, is he? And why not? Well, it looks like the toes of these shoes are all cropped down. He's the best dancer in town. Well, that's quite natural for a girl to feel that way about her young man. He's not my young man. Clyde Miller is, well, he's just a good friend. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to blush so deep about it. I'm not blushing. Well, I'm sorry. But I'd say it again if you blush that pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the best of Sandy, Phyllis. He sure is a card. Oh, by the way... He was telling me he wanted some place to put up. That's right. Phyllis's aunt runs a boarding house. Yes, she does, Sandy. You might come over and see if you like it. Well, I do that. But I can't come right now because I've got a peck of work ahead of me. And I wouldn't be fibbing the mite to you if I told you that I didn't even know how to start it. I wish you'd start with mine. All right, all right. I... No, on second thought, I think I'd better practice on the boot first. <laughs> all right, I'll see you tonight. Yeah, all right. Bye. 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 What do you want? Who are you? Who am I? You better get back on that horse and start running before I show you. Let him alone. Better. Let's explain. Next time you see me, don't start asking questions. The next time I see you, I'll know you. Come on in, Gus. Who's that new man? He's on the dodge. He rode in today. Get rid of him. He's all right. He's a good gun hand. What'd you let him in for? Well, he can take Red's place. <laughs> he was hopping mad because we beat him to the bank by about five minutes. Now, well, watch him. Take him with you on our first little party. If he makes one wrong move, let him have it. Stay outside. This is a business talk. There's business going on here. I'm in on it. This is private business. That's the kind I like to hear. Hey, who is he? I'm giving orders here. They might as well all up and listen to this. Call him in. Hey, nickel plate. Killifer, come on in. Oh, now, you might be used to operating alone, but you ain't running any part of this outfit. You're taking orders. Now, man, there's a gold dust ship leaving town tomorrow night. Pick up the stagecoach right where the road runs in the Sand Hill Pass. After that, stay out of sight till you hear from me. Now, there's a man that speaks my language. late for supper? No. Annie Mack! Annie Mack! Don't be a yelling like the house is a fire. Every breath of time I... Oh. Uh, this is Sandy, Annie Mack. Sandy Hopkins. Miss Phyllis said I might board with you. Maybe. Well, sit down. I'll let you know when supper's ready. Don't mind her. She always talks as though she just stubbed her toe. Oh, I don't. <laughs> My, something smells awful good, or else I'm mighty hungry. Oh, here's your shoes. I hope you'll be pleased with them, because I fixed them mighty solid like. Well, hurry up. Supper's all ready. And I know it's going to be mighty tasty. Well, come on. You don't want it to get cold, do you? Oh! oh. Uh, what's the matter with your hands? Oh, no, nothing there. Nothing at all. Let me see it. Why, that nail's all black. Is it contagious? I don't think so. I cut it from a hammer. Oh, uh, Phyllis, uh, get me that ball fire liniment and some rags and a big needle. A needle? It ain't that bad, is it? I know what I'm doing. I ought to. I nursed two husbands to a comfortable grave. Two husbands to a comfortable grave? I did that. And you ain't as strong as either one of them. You can't. Here you are, Annie Mac. Oh, yes, this ball of fire liniment. Just use it for everything. Maybe a little mite strong, but you just have to stand it. <coughs> oh, now I know why they call it that. Yeah, now, let me wrap it up now. Where's Clyde? Uh, he knows he can hear seven. Uh, uh, Clyde, is he coming? Yes, he's coming. Him that ain't missed a supper in months. Come on now, give me your finger. Oh! Another bandage. You know, when that clock over there strikes seven... <laughs> 
you hear him knock on that door. There. What did I tell you? Now, mind that, so go on. Open the door. Open the door. Let him in. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, Clyde. Hello, Andy Mac. Uh, this is Sandy Hopkins, the new boarder. Glad to see you again. All right. You did some mighty fine shooting this morning. Well, I can't take credit for that. That's a sort of accidental light. I guess it must have been. Some of the boys have been pacing it off. 64 yards. Almost 65. That's remarkable. I didn't know a pistol would carry that far. He was on the run, too. But you got him. Oh! My land supper's already gone. Get in there. Get in there. Now, don't hurry up. Go on in, Clyde. I'm not going to go supper and have to get all full for we eat. And the people made it safe for many miles away. For the outlaws, Frank and Jesse Jane. Jesse left a wife to mourn all her life. The children, that they all are brave. For the dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard and laid poor Jesse in his grave. I can't figure it out, and neither can Mr. Bradford. I'm only glad you didn't get shot. Did Addie Max see through all your fine singing? I'm afraid so. She's still at it. I was just telling Phyllis, I can't understand how that gang of outlaws finds out about things. No? No, it just so happened we had more money in the bank today than we've had in six months. Hmm. Did you take it all? Well, yes, all the cash. sure whether you're signal or not. Here of late, the birds have been starting to whistle just like you. You seem to be right at home. That woman, she could corral a bunch of outlaws single-handed. We may need a thing to start up. Yeah? Had a visitor up at Bear Paw today. Hmm. Name is Slade. He's the boss, all right. But he's got a partner. We've got to find out who he is. Slade runs a saloon. Maybe his partner lives here, too. Well, it's a mighty good lead to start with. They're thinking on holding up the stage tomorrow night for a shipment of gold. It's right here in the bank now. You know, I thought that was more or less of a secret after the way this gang's been operating. Yeah, that's just it. There's a leak somewhere. Tomorrow night. Don't give us much time, does it? No. Hey, I want you to figure out a way to keep that gold here just in case I missed out. Well, I suppose I could rob the bank. Bury the dust. Yeah, you figure out an angle. You're smart enough for that. I am? Why, sure. But right now, we're going to pay Mr. Slade a visit. The photos? Yeah. You go on ahead. But listen, why don't you just stir him up a little for me? How bad do you want him riled up, Nevada? Oh, make him mad enough to shoot you. Nevada, you know, sometimes you're awful good to me. And listen, remember, we are strangers. I'm going to be the strangest stranger you ever met. Good. Come on. I'll stay. Bay of Hearts, Ben of Hearts, Bay of Diamonds, and a Q girl. Ace high, uh, three blue. I'll just call that. Barrett, I don't know how a man's luck can run so bad. Unless there's something wrong with the demon. Folks have been killed for those kind of remarks, old-timer. People have gotten a lot of trouble from calling me old-timer. Fine. I'll take a stack. Another $50 table stakes. Might be a little rough for you. It's an open game. It's an empty chair. 
Here's my money. All right. You asked for it. You don't seem to be very friendly. I picked my friends. I'm careful that way, too. Nine of spades. Three of clubs. Five of hearts. King of spades. Deuce of diamonds. King of diamonds. First king bets. No. No call. I'll stay. Beats me. Thanks, better. Coming around. Seven of spades. Hold the deal. I don't want that one. Your card, pick it up. No. I'd rather have the one that's coming to me. The one that's on top. Are you accusing me of cheating? What do you think? I wouldn't do that if I were you. I'd just sit down and take it easy. a man of cheating, you better know what you're talking about. Well, look to me like he was... Shut up. He was on the level. I saw it. I should have let him drill it. You make tracks through that door. Exactly. Sit down. Read this. Stage inspection. What about it? That ought not to bother you, none. Well, it doesn't. Only we're going to see that this inspector gets the man who's working undercover with those bandits. In fact, we're going to catch him ourselves. We can figure it out. I got the man all picked out. When we get that goal tonight, he'll be on the stage. And carrying a little evidence with him. What, for instance? Some of my securities. How are you going to do it? Listen, there's Curly Blue driving that stage tonight. Yeah, Curly. But I want you to have a talk with him first, and then ride up and tell the boys. Now, we're taking our man off that stage tonight. And then when the inspector arrives here, we'll have a prisoner waiting for him. That's simple, isn't it? Oh, uh, Clyde. Hello, Hello Sandy. Sandy. How's the fingers? You bust any more? Well, just fine. They're practically healed up. I got a new system now. I don't hit them anymore. How come? Well, I grabbed the hammer in both hands. <laughs> you no, know, I understand that the stage line inspector is coming through in the morning. We just got the news. How did you know? Well, I make it my business to know a lot of things. Come inside. I want to speak to you for a moment. See that? U.S. Marshal's badge. What are you doing with it? I carry it because I'm a United States Marshal. Oh, I thought you were a shoemaker. <laughs> if you'd ever worn any boots with my fixings on them, you'd know better than that. I don't understand. Why don't you wear it from the outside? Well, now, wait a minute. Did you ever hear of a bad man wearing a badge out here saying, I'm a bandit? No. I guess not. Sit down. You know, there's a gold shipment going out on the stage tonight. That's right. How did you know? I just told you. I'm a marshal. And it's my opinion that there's an undercover man in this town who's the head of that gang that's doing all the cleaning up. Are you sure? I'm just as sure of that as I am they're going to hold up that stage tonight. Well, if you know that, why don't you get a posse together and arrest them? <laughs> See, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to corral the lead man. 
I'm not going to ship those strong boxes out tonight. I'm not so sure that that would work. I think they'd know about it just as soon as you. And besides, that would mess up the plans of my partner and put them all gallywops. Who is your partner? Another United States Marshal in hiding. In fact, the matter is, he's up with those bandits now, only they don't know it. Suppose I ship something in place of the gold, but not till they open the boxes. That's just exactly what I want you to do, Clyde. Just wait till folks find out you're a marshal, not a shoemaker. Well, now that the United States Marshal business will have to kind of remain a secret between you and I. And as far as the shoemaker business, well, the customers will find that out soon enough themselves. <laughs> you can count on me, Sandy. Thank you, Clyde. I thought you'd be that kind of a boy. What are you doing, Miller? Filling the strong box of sand, Mr. Bradford. We can't ship gold tonight. Why not? The stage is going to be held up. Held up, huh? Yes. How do you know this? Who told you? Well, I gave my word not to tell that, but I will say one thing. The bandits are due for surprise. There's a U.S. Marshal riding with them, and they don't know it. A U.S. Marshal, huh? Well, now, that is good news. Uh, perhaps, however, if he's going to be with them, ready to catch them, it might be all right to send that gold to them. I think it's better this way, sir. Even the U.S. Marshal's plans might slip up. Well, maybe you're right. Uh, go on with the exchange. Now, you got it straight, Curly? Sure. As soon as it's all over with, drive back to the saloon and tell them the story about Miller. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I understand you've got a new man up at the hideout. Yeah, Gus took one on yesterday. Yeah, well, the man Gus took on yesterday happens to be a U.S. Marshal. What? Say, maybe we... Not anything. You take care of that Marshal, Slade, and then go through with everything as planned. Good as done. Now, Curly, you have your instructions? Sure, Slade. Take a play tune in Nevada. Go down to the lookout route and take over for a while. Uh, you can spot that rifle of his as far as he can shoot it. But I don't mess with it. Go on down there. Don't let anybody get up that draw unless you know him. You guys want to play a little pitch? Yeah. Yeah. Right, Comes a customer. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You made a mistake. Where's Gus? Inside. Where's that new man? Sent him down to draw a little while ago. Why? What you want him for? He happens to be a U.S. Marshal. That's all. A U.S. Marshal? Yes, and we got to get him and get him quick. I'll take care of him. I know right where he is. Better I'll go. No, Charles, no, no, let him go. He's got a personal grudge to settle. Where's the big boy? I haven't seen him. Slade, you seen him just a few minutes ago. No, no, I, I mean the other one. He doesn't come around much, huh? Oh, him? There's something funny about them. I can't lose that. Here.
<laughs> well, I'd like to do that every day in the week. Did you get him? Like a bottle on a fence. I sure scared the pants off nickel plate. He jumped his horse and split the breeze away from camp. <laughs> He'll come back. I don't know. He started out like he was quitting the country. What about that marshal's body? Leave it right where it is. More evidence against Miller when he's picked up here after the holdup. You told me yourself that Marshall is going to be with them, ready to crack down on them. You're not afraid, are you? No. I'm not afraid. Well, that's the first time I ever saw you carry a gun, Miller. Said these securities had to get through, that Marshall may need help. That's the spirit, my boy. You'll get through all right. And catch the next stage fast. I'll drop off and tell Phyllis I'm late. No, there won't be time for that. I'll do it for you. Now, I'm depending on you. Goodbye and good luck. And I'll lock up. And don't tell anyone you leave. All right, Curly, let's go. There he is now. I'll leave you alone, Mr. Sandy. Come. Come in. Well, you look very lovely, Phyllis. Oh, Mr. Bradford, I thought you were crying. Well, I thought I might find him here. I'm expecting him. Well, I'm a bit worried about some securities that seem to have been misplaced. Uh, I gave them to him yesterday. Well, won't you wait? I'm sure he'll be here soon. Oh, no, it's not that important. I'll take another look at the bank. I hope you find them. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Clyde, if she tells you she made all that dress of... Well, where is he? It wasn't Clyde, it was Mr. Bradford. That old skin flint. Oh, he's not. Now, I like that hat better now, don't you? Oh, much better. Thank you, Annie Mack. Come in. Am I supposed to knock or walk right in? You live here, don't you? Yes. And figure it out for yourself. Well, I figured it. Sandy, have you seen Clyde? Well, yes. I just saw him across the street. He had to go east in a hurry, didn't he? Go east? What do you mean? Well, I just saw him get on the stagecoach. The stagecoach? I don't understand. What, he was supposed to take me to the dance. Oh, well, there's nothing to worry about. I guess he just drove down to the barn and checked on some shipping. I'll go out and uh, take a look for him. Somebody told Slade and the gang that I'm a United States Marshal and they tried to get me. Oh, nobody knew it. You and myself. Yes. Well, wait a minute. I did tell that kid that worked in the bank, but he couldn't be the one. Anybody could be the one. Where's the kid now? Slade. With the gold? No gold. He put sand in those boxes. After you told him about the holdup, he went anyway? Yes. Yeah. There's something wrong about that. Well, I can't figure that myself. We've got to find that kid. He's in trouble. Come on, get your horse and we'll follow that coach. Get your hand away from that gun. Right down. 
Wait. Surprised to see me, eh, Miller? Well, you got a bigger surprise coming to you. Search him. You got the strong box. I haven't anything you want. This is what you want. In fact, the kid's in with him. No, but the driver is. Pretty smart of old man Badford to figure this out. He'll put us all in the clear. Yeah, well, if you make your story good when you get back, bring his horse up here. The bush might be pretty. Let's go down and take him. No, now, wait a minute. When we take him, we want to corral them all. There's a man in town that we don't know who he is yet. Now, if you're looking for that United States Marshal, he won't be here. Stop the bullet and bear far draw. You won't get away with this, Slade. You'll be plenty surprised when you open that strong box. Uh, well, we'll find out what you're talking about. We get the shock of their lives now. know about this? Sure. You watch me change. Get him on that horse. Simmons, take him up the cabin. You know the orders. What are we going to do, boss? We're heading to town. Bradford crossed me. Curly, you follow us. They're splitting up. Yeah, now we can move in. Yeah, lead us right to the man we're looking for. I'm going after that kid. All right. And I'll trail that gang into town and watch their movements till you get there. Look for my horse. Take charge of that man, Simmons. Wait a minute, son. I'll untie you. You must be the U.S. Marshal. They told me they got you. Yeah? Well, they'll find out different. Let's ride. We are headed for town. Wait, I'll get his gun. That little business my own to settle with Mr. Bradford. He's behind this whole thing. Bradford, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to know. Let's go. out to be sand. Men don't live that cost me. Have you gone mad? Put that gun away. Put it away. Why, the gold is still in my safe. I just didn't have time to send word to you. And I, I just didn't know exactly what that marshal might uh, manage to do. I told you we'd take care of him. We did. 
Now, Curly's right behind us with the stage. Now, get in there and get that posse organized. And remember this, Bradford. I'll be in my office. You won't be out of my sight till we open that safe together. Now, go on. Men, I had you come here tonight because this town faces a serious situation. My bank has been robbed three times. Sheriff Middick was killed, and so far nobody has been appointed to take his place. Well, then there's time that something was done about it. Now, I'm against all violence, but I believe the one thing for us to do is to organize a citizen's vigilance committee. Well, that's the way they cleaned up Virginia City, wasn't it? Well, yeah, and they did a good job, too. Well, well we'll do it here. Gentlemen, we've got to do something just as drastic. What's going on here? Meeting. We're organizing to run down them bandits. Well, it's about time somebody did something about it. We'll have to do it. I'll lend the full support of my bank. You're here. Say you just held up. What's there, that? They've done it hey. again. Yeah, that gold shipment of yours is gone. Why, that's impossible. No one knew he was shipping it. Five Miller knew it. Yes, of course. Well, he was on the stage and helped him do it. I I did. Did. Miller! Well, he's been with him. Just as I was pulling into Sandy Hill. No, no, no. no it, it couldn't be Clyde. Yeah, but he did. They had a horse ready for him. Miller was laughing as they rode away. You hear that? He not only robbed it, but he yeah, laughed about uh, it. Curly, this is a pretty hard thing for us to realize, but. I'm afraid we'll have to, at least part of it. Of one thing we're sure, Miller is with the bandits now. And when we find them, he'll have a chance to speak for himself. Well, at least he picked out a new spot to do the job. Well, I sure never would have suspected Miller. Well, I still can't believe it. Well, it's as plain as day. He's been tipping them bandits off right along. I say let's start now. Well, me and the boys is willing to ride with you, aren't we, boys? Well, I'm going to borrow my gun. Me too. We'll find Miller if we have to turn over every rock in the state. I wouldn't go to all that trouble. Miller's right here. What is this? Another holdup? That's right. Bradford and these five men are under arrest for murder and robbery. Why, that's ridiculous, Why? These men have known me for years. Not well enough. Where's your partner, Slade? Out of you three boys. Don't you feel lucky? I'm a United States Marshal, Jack McKenzie. This is my partner, Marshal Hopkins. Uh, United States Marshal? Well, I'm one of us a bootmaker. Well, uh, well, Miller here is 100% innocent, but his testimony is going to convict Bradford. Your gold is still safe here in the bank. Men, that dance is still going on over at the hall, and your wives are waiting. We'll take charge of these bandits. Uh, I'm going to have no use for them. Here, Dick, put this away. I won't take it. Give it to him. I'm going to... Oh, these boots are killing me. Mine, too. Here they come. No, Marshal, I've just got to do it. Me, me too. I'm with you. Unappreciative of my cobbling. Hey, did you ever have a boot to pinch? 
I sure have. I guess I can't blame them very much. You know, we sure cut ourselves a piece of that gooseberry pie, didn't we? Yep. All the aches and pains are gone. It's a good town now. Yeah. I don't reckon you'd like to come down to Texas and set a spell. No, I'm heading north. Well, so long, Nevada. So long, Sandy. <laughs> 